Now then, we still need to find that murder weapon. Oh yeah, we never did get quite around to doing that, now did we? Mr. Edgeworth! She climbed the thing to the She challenged the monkey! She went all the way up there! It's fine now, Kay, come down from there. It was scurry, man! Where's Mr. Shields? Beats me. He just took off running like death was after him. Ah, good grief, that man. What should we do now, Mr. Edgeworth? We'll continue investigating. First, we should. Start by solving that one mystery. You're gonna have to be a lot more specific. Knightley's body was found in a workroom inside the prison. However... He was supposed to be in the detention center's holding cell, so what the heck and heck is that all about? How did he get to the prison under such tight security? Was it really that tight of a security? Cause it kind of seemed mostly like a, but you know, maybe one or two dudes that were kind of distracted by animals at the time. Let's go investigate the holding cell at the detention center. That was where Mr. Knightley was held, right? But what about Uncle Ray? Eh, let's just leave him be for now. I thought we were supposed to be his assistants though. Yeah, well, I don't care that much, so. <laughs> If he wants to cut and run, then he's more than welcome to do so. The victim's cell in the detention center was this way. Let's check it out, Mr. Edgeworth! Yes, that was the plan. Thank you, Kay. Oh, this is truly just dreadful. Hey, what happened? It's be she! I was just standing there! Where did they even come from? That's the warden, Miss Roland. She must have come from behind that no-entry sign. Okay, well, ask and ye shall receive an answer. So he still won't talk? Even after all the trouble you went through to get the evidence transferred from the precinct? That's right. I don't know how many times I've tried. I can't report back empty-handed. That assassin sure is one tough cookie, huh? Did he just say assassin? Oh my. Pardon me, but were you talking about Shivrasahan Do Doggett just now? Oh, eavesdropping, were you? You naughty boy. It's more so you just have a very loud, booming voice. Did you question him personally, Warden Roland? Not just him. I try to have a heart-to-heart -heart with all the prisoners and suspects. In my home, we're all family here. It's much like an olive garden. Same amount of iron bars. Weird, that. It's only fair I invite them to my warden's office. The warden's office? Oh, have you taken an interest in my room as well? Eh, uh, in one way. Not in the way I think you think I do. It's just down this hallway, but outsiders are not allowed past this point. Down the hallway, so around there. Huh. <laughs> it's such a lovely place. Uh, people do so enjoy being invited back there. I am left wondering. I always show them the splendid view of my precious courtyard. The courtyard of this animal-filled prison. I'd sure love to see it. Well, if you're gonna be a great thief, you just might one day get to have that chance, Kay. Never say never. I'm delighted that you want to see it. However, I cannot invite you. What? You're not a child of our home. You're not a prisoner. You get no privileges. If you want to come to my room, you'll have to be convicted first. That's a rather high hurdle to clear. Goodness me, look at how long we've been talking. It's been like a minute and a half, but all right. I was just about to feed Allie her lunch. Allie? She is my favorite little angel. Is that the one who's currently wrapped around your neck? Now, if you'll excuse me, I must be off to the courtyard. Toodaloo! What an odd warden. I never got a chance to ask her about Doggin. It's almost as if she was avoiding the topic. Hmm. Ah, well, let's head over to Knightley's cell. The no-name guard? We don't give a damn. A terrorlet! This is the victim's cell. When did Mr. Knightley arrive in here again? It was after the president's welcoming ceremony on the night of March 25th. So, when and how did he move over to the prison? There might be some evidence left that can answer that. All right, let's get cracking, Mr. Edgeworth. Your enthusiasm is forever infectious, Kay, and I'm delighted to have you around. Oh, and now they're both staring at me. Why are they doing that? I feel slightly uncomfortable. Let's talk about it. What you got to say? You notice anything? There's so many things in this cell. Yes, although they don't all appear to be Knightley's personal belongings. There's also a collection of books that belong to this cell. 
Ow! This might not be such a bad place to live in after all. If you want to spend the night here, I won't stop you. Thanks, but no thanks. But since we're here, we might as well learn everything we can. All right, let's begin our investigation of the Holden Cell. But what do you have to say about chess? It's apparently very important to this game. Chess seems to be popular here. Nile even brought in a chess set. No, from what I've seen, the only people who have an interest in chess are Knightley and that man. That man? Ah, you mean that scary guy. Indeed. Those two have a shared interest in chess. Is that just a coincidence? Or are all chess players secretly murderers? Hard to say. This requires more thought and investigation. Alright, well, as all good investigators do, we shall start where everyone must. The turlet. Hang on, no, I accidentally clicked the thing. I want to look at the turlet. Well, that's a window, sure. Windows with iron bars. There are no signs of tampering. Does it look like the criminal could have escaped through here? Mm -hmm. What if these iron bars are removable? She's doing a punchy! Let me inspect them for future reference! Okay, now's not the time for that. We're in the middle of an investigation. And she's investigating the best way to escape a holding cell. It's not as dirty as I thought it would be. And the toilet paper shows no signs of use, so he has not had to use the bathroom since arriving. Most suspicious. Looks like there are no problems with the toilet. Eh? There's a huge problem! What's the problem? It's totally awkward having the toilet out in the open like that. There's a small little partition. We need to think more about the end user. This facility wasn't designed with the spirit of service in mind. It's merely just a formality. Anyway, why do I keep accidentally hitting that? I wanted to look at whatever's on this desk. Fascinating! I won't rest until every nook and cranny has been thoroughly shaken down! Alright, uh, why is there a menu? Mr. Edgeworth! Is this a dining menu? You can choose your daily meals in the detention center. However, unless you have the money, you won't be able to choose what you want to eat. That is weird. In the end, the world revolves around money. Yeah, but I feel like you already knew that. Doesn't this mean that the rich won't have to reflect on their crimes? Yes, well, those who come here haven't been declared guilty yet. There are a few good people who don't need to reflect. Probably. It sounds like you're just making excuses for them, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> Why should I have to come up with excuses for the detention center? It's not really within my jurisdiction. Anyway, what the heck is this? Ah, there's something on the desk. Seems to be some kind of memo. Let me take a closer look. Uh-oh, this looks like a big pile of nonsense that I don't want anything to do with. I hate this aggressively. Oh, no. Um, okay, well, let's see. Next move is bishop to g2. Next I move rook, no, pawn to g6. All right, well, let's examine, I guess. This is chess notation. It was probably the victim's. What's a chess notation? It's a memo that records the positions of the pieces on a chessboard. This is a good match. My next move would be pawn to... Num no, actually, before that. Mr. Edgeworth, this is no time to be playing chess. Nonsense! There's always time! I, I mean, you're right. Hmm? The positions of the chess pieces recorded in this memo. I feel like I've seen something similar somewhere else. I should take a close look at the evidence I've collected. Uh... Okay, sure, if that's what I gotta do. Let's see. What have I got around these here parts? Maybe prison investigation? Uh, da -da 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 -da, no. Hound piece. Maybe, is that what it wants? I mean, I don't really have anything to lose right now. Maybe that's the case. Is this slot somehow connected to any of the things? It might be? Uh, let's see. Yeah, just, I mean, just the chess piece and the chest in general, yeah? Is that possible? Eureka! The music stopped? The chest notation, I've seen it before. You're still thinking about chess? Focus on the investigation! Focus! Chess is quite important to this investigation! And that's not an excuse. Hmm. Okay, have a look at this. Are these the chess pieces from Dog and Cell? I don't know much about the rules of chess. The rules of chess are not important here. Uh, look at the positions of the chess pieces in this memo and the pieces in Dog and Cell. Do you notice anything? Not especially, no. Ah! I don't know anything about the different chess pieces, but if you flip the board around, the positions of the chess pieces are completely the same. 
Flip it around. E yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah! Okay! Yes. Although the memo doesn't include the Cerberus chess piece, the positions of the other chess pieces are identical. What's going on here? Was this who Doggin was having correspondence chess with? Because that's absolutely silly. I always play correspondence chess. This might be hard to believe, but Doggin's chess opponent was... Are you saying he was playing against Mr. Knightley? With this, we now have the evidence to link Doggin with the victim. That's handy dandy. Thank you kindly. Uh, anything else worth noting? Doesn't seem so. I think that this just existed for the sole purpose of connecting the the the, the victim and him. Let's see, yep, yeah, nope, same thing as before. All right. That appears to be all that there is that needs to be known. Yes, yes, we've done this, we get this, we're good. Uh, any of these books worth noting? There are a lot of books here. What's this? The Wonderful Warden of Ours? The Hound Whistler? The Animal Shack Redemption? Mr. Knightley. He was a surprisingly good person. I don't think these were his books. No, the detention center provides these books for the visitor's own edification. These books are supposed to help you grow as a human being. Hmm. Prison life for dummies. These books were written by model prisoners and former inmates. Ah, here, here's a helpful book. The Great Escape in 80 Days, based on a true story. Ooh, check this one out! Crime and Establishment, How to Make Money in Prison. Uh, problems with this detention center may run deeper than I thought. Ooh, why are they willing to teach their prisoners stuff of that nature? That's a little bit suspect. Anyway, what's all this about? Also, what the hell is all over the floor? All right, yes, 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 the nooks and crannies. We're all very inquisitive about them. What is up with the floor? Hmm? Something seems off. The floor here is clean. Was it mopped recently? Uh, I mean, if it was, then boy howdy, was it really poorly done. Either way, somebody cl tried to clean something up. That's interesting. It seems strange that only the area in front of the bed has been wiped clean. All right, well, what about this year, a Jakato, eh? It's Horace Knightley's suit. Uh, according to the results of my investigation... Eh. What did you find out? A man who looks good in a suit leaves a more favorable impression with the ladies. Ah! Next time, I'll investigate men who look good in frills! P please don't bother. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess she'd know. I honestly have no such opinion. <laughs> this newspaper, it's missing a few pages. They appear to be torn out. Egads! Alright, well what's up with that? Why would someone tear out the pages from a newspaper? Also, I didn't know newspapers were... In Japan, are newspapers attached to each other? Because in America, it's just a bunch of miscellaneous papers folded together. Maybe they use it to clean the cell instead of a rack? Clean the cell? That's well, quite possible. That's not a bad thought. Interesting. Very interesting. Thank you, Kay. Let's see. Anything else going on around these ear parts? Like, whatever this thing is? Whoa, hello. Hmm. The reflection in the mirror. Ah, it's a security camera. A great thief's arch enemy. I guess they don't take too kindly to thieves here. It's literally a police station or prison thing. Come on. There's no reason for a detention center to be kind to thieves. Guard! I would like you to check the footage of this security camera. If you find any problems, report to me at once. Understood, sir. Wouldn't that be one of the first things anybody would have done? Huh. All right, well, now what do I do? <laughs> um, I feel like I've looked at everything there is to look at. Is that an iron ball attached to this chair? If so, why though? Well, if it is, I can't see it, or inspect it rather. Can I leave? Uh, the answer to that is no. Alright, let me check out my logic points for a moment. I guess these must go together. Was Kay's theory correct? The answer is yes! Good for her! The floor here is clean. I just wanted to see if there was any other logic points that I needed before I could do anything. It was probably wiped down with something. Did someone spill grape juice here? It's always grape juice! I don't know exactly what was wiped away. Probably blood. But I can imagine what was used to wipe it. It's very likely it was this torn up newspaper. Couldn't he have asked one of the guards if he could borrow a cleaning rag? 
Perhaps it was something he didn't want the guards to see. Hmm. Interesting. Oh! Okay. Oh. We gained some information, I guess. This is what our investigation turned up. It seems we found a major connection between the victim and dog and... Th this is terrible! Eh? What happened? The, the security camera recorded something terrible! B what? C can you let me see it? No! I mean, yes! Of course, sir! I have a portable playback device right here! Well, that's convenient. We have portable playback devices, yet we're still using VHS tapes. Alright. Then let me see it right away! What do you got? Woo! Look at that animation! Interesting. This is... Th this black thing has got to be the doggy, right? Up until this point, I thought the murder took place inside the prison. But it appears I was mistaken. Looks like, yeah, that would definitely make a lot of sense to me. The place where Knightley was attacked was in the holding cell itself. Seeing as how he shouldn't have been able to leave at all, it would make a lot of sense. It was the detention center. And furthermore, he was attacked by Doggin's dog. This is the decisive evidence! Hell to the yeah, 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 yeah! Thank you very much! If Knightley was killed in this room, then this piece of evidence we found in the cell takes on a new meaning! Eh, where? Which piece of evidence takes on a new meaning if the murder occurred in the holding cell? I'm- well, I'm gonna go ahead and guess probably the white floor! <laughs> For some reason, someone wiped the floor clean. It's possible they were wiping away bloodstains. That was going to be my first and foremost thought. Thank you for your hard work. While I have your attention, may I ask for one more favor? What would that be? There should be a detective by the name of Dick Gumshoe in the detention center or the prison. I would like you to give him a message. Tell him to check this room for traces of blood and give the results to me. D yes, sir. Always count on Gum Gum. This should corner that old coot. No, not yet. We still don't know how Knightley and the dog moved from here to the prison. Yeah, I feel like if the dog dragged his corpse all the way over to that workroom, someone would have noticed? That's true. But once we figure that out, uh, where should we check out next, Mr. Edgeworth? The guards here might know something about the murder. Let's see if we can learn any new details from them. We're so good at our jobs! I feel pretty good about everything, not even gonna lie to you. Alrighty, so now what's going down? Alright, let's continue our- Ah! He God's almighty, it's that guy! Oh, sorry to intrude. His theme music! Well, well, well. I see you still wearing practical shit. I mean, of course you do, it's been like two weeks. Well, if it isn't Mr. Prosecutor and the little lady. Fancy meeting you here. This man is Shilong Lang, an Interpol agent. About two weeks ago, he was in charge of investigating one of my cases. And, I mean, while I wouldn't exactly call ourselves friends, I like to feel like we have a mutual working respect for each other. I would have thought he returned to his native country of Zheng Fa by now. Agent Lang, what brings you here? Just some boring work. Nothing you need to know about. <laughs> On top of a black dog, we meet a black wolf. Huh? You came alone today, Agent Lang? It, yeah, my, 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 my partner got arrested for murder. Like, do you not remember that, Kay? I think about it every day. Usually, he'd have a huge police force with him. Oh, that's what they meant. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Prosecutor, seems you've been busy these past few days. These past few days? He's referring to the incident with the Zheng Fa president. I would have thought you'd be involved in his security, too. Ha! <laughs> Our president doesn't even trust his own country's police force. Look at the results of hiring a private security company. It's laughable. Agent Lang doesn't trust prosecutors or the courts. That's why. He brings along a large force of capable policemen to thoroughly investigate the crime scene. Yes, if you and your subordinates had been there, the results might have been different. My subordinates, huh? They're no longer with me. Uh, hopefully they're just, like, transferred or something. They're not with you? Funny. Looks like I'm a real lone wolf now. <laughs> Agent Lang, just 
What happened exactly? Didn't I tell you? It's nothing you need to know about. Well, be seeing you, Mr. Prosecutor. So we're not on first name basis, or last name basis anymore? That's a bit of a bummer. Mr. Lang, I wonder what happened. Yeah, this troubles me too, but there's nothing we can do about it for now. Okay, let us continue with our investigation. Got it. First, let's ask those guards a few questions. More specifically, this guard! Eh, hang on, this guard! You there! Have you seen a black dog around here? Of course not! If I'd actually seen it, I wouldn't be standing around here so carefree! Uh, did something happen with that doggy? Okay, it's a literal murder hellhound. Let's not press the matter any further. Hmm. So dog and dog didn't come by the detention center. Well, clearly it did! This is a difficult case. What's wrong? Is something troubling you? S sir uh, one of my uniforms has gone missing. That's interesting, I've got to say. But I'm certain that I placed it in this locker. Maybe the uniform grew legs and walked off somewhere. I mean, assuming the uniform, ha you know, involved pants. Yeah, maybe. What kind of logic is that? In any case, I wish you the best in your search. I'll be rooting for you. Yes, thank you for your support. Yeah, I kind of thought that that would be a little more important than that. Oh, there you are. Oh, it's this friggin' guy again. Mr. Shields, where did you go? Oh, uh, you know, I was hiding in the bathroom. Where indeed? I've been searching for you guys this whole time. We are barely anywhere different from where we originally were when you ran away, so I'm not sure how you had such a hard time finding us. Walking all around the prison is hard work, you know? That's strange, seeing as how you came from the opposite direction. I've got some new information! You wanna hear it? Do you? Yeah, sure. He sure changed the subject quickly, as if he's some sort of cowardman! I heard a little something from the guards. It seems nightly caused a bit of an incident two days ago. An incident? I don't think he's been arrested for two days, so how did he do that? You know how Simon said he came to visit Knightley, right? I guess he must have. Eh, eh, whatever. After the visit, when Knightley returned to his cell... Naturally, a guard escorted Knightley back to his cell. While the guard was unlocking his handcuffs, all of a sudden, Knightley struck the guard and knocked him out. Dang! Seems he was going to attempt a jailbreak. By the time the other guards arrived, the key to his cell had disappeared. But there's been no reports of Knightley's jailbreak attempt two days ago. Exactly. It's strange, isn't it? Right up until his death, he was still in his cell. What's more, Knightley claimed he never stole the key in the first place. In fact, they searched his cell and the key was nowhere to be found. Did the guard who was struck have anything to say? Oh no, he did. No one knows. He was taken to the hospital while he was still unconscious. He's still there now, it seems. Damn, that must have been one hell of a head, but then again, it yeah, it's actually true to life, not fiction. If you ever see anybody get hit in the head hard enough that they pass out, they need immediate medical attention. That's not going to just be, oh, they're going to wake up in an hour all groggy. No, they probably have a very serious concussion and could die. Just throwing that out there. So don't ever shrug off someone getting head trauma to the point of being knocked out. It's not good. Not always, but it's a possibility and you need to be mindful of it. Interesting. It's you! Huh? That voice. So many voices today. Oh, Lord, it's them. All right. Guess we're doing this now. What are you still doing hanging around here? Uh, well, you see, this is my assistant. Are you here to object to our investigation and make me into a laughingstock? I mean, with hair like that, you really don't need my help, dude. Sebastian, I believe obstruct is the word you're looking for? In a way, I think his expression was apt. <laughs> a pleasure meeting you again, Judge Courtney. I am. I know. You are Simon Key's defense attorney, are you not? Well then, let's skip the formalities and celebrate our happy reunion with a hug. I will beat you to death. Or maybe not. I don't know if she's evil or not, but I mean, she is pretty. Incidentally, I heard you mention an assistant a moment ago. Yeah, we're assistants at the Edgeworth Law Offices. Prosecutors are civil servants. To open a side business is to betray the goddess of law! As long as profit is not our objective, there shouldn't be a problem, right? Yeah, that's it. Miles here is a volunteer worker. The purpose of my office isn't to make money. We're pro bono. 
How do you manage that? What a wonderful heart you have. Defending others without demanding payment. <laughs> I do have an amazing charitable heart. More importantly, I'd like you to explain your reasons for arresting Simon Keys. Well, there's no need to. Is that a challenge against me? I, I feel like this guy needs a voice, but I don't know what. No, I was speaking with Judge Courtney. I had, I had no interest in speaking to you in any shape, way, or form. I guess it can't be helped. If you want to take on the best, you'll fall like the rest. I haven't said anything yet, but this is convenient. Then I'll hear you out. What were your reasons for arresting Mr. Keys? I see no need to inform you. Sebastian, let us... <laughs> Just watch, Justine. Watch as I run around in circles against this useless prosecutor. I think you mean run circles around me. Yeah, well, that's what I meant. Prepare yourself, Mr. Edgeworth. This guy's not very good at metaphors and turns of phrase, is he? So, you want to know my reasons for arresting that man? What is this music? The answer is simple. Yes, we found traces of that guy over there. How's that? Perfectly simple. Perfectly decisive. Right? N no. Not even slightly. What? Of course, I was the first to notice it because I'm the best. Um, how am I supposed to go about pressing that? You may have just given me the single most vague testimony I've ever seen in this franchise. How did you do that? How's that? Got nothing to say? Speechless in my presence? Ah, <sighs> this guy sure talks a lot. So, you're the one who arrested Mr. Keys, I take it? Mr. DeBest, do you have the right to do such a thing? No. Well, obviously it was the police who carried out the arrest. But since it was under my direction, shouldn't it also count as my arrest? As I expected. It'd be difficult to deal with both of them at the same time, however... Her silence is troubling me. Just what is she thinking? Crimes, maybe? Who knows? Alright, so, um... Okay, so, out of everything you said... Okay, you found traces? What traces? That guy? What guy? Over there? Where? I can guesstimate the that guy, obviously, but everything else is so completely obtusely vague that it's frankly mind-boggling. Please give something vaguely resembling a description or a detail. That guy over there? That's certainly vague. Well, don't they say the best hears one thing and understands ten? No? You're just being lazy. Explain it more clearly. Sebastian, if it's all right with you, would you please explain it to them in more detail? I'm sure that everyone wants to hear what you have to say. Why are you so adamant about babying this guy? Hmm. All right, if you insist, Justine. We discovered that. Perhaps you didn't know, but the victim carried a chessboard with him. Yeah, we were aware. From it, we found that suspect guy's, I mean, Simon Key's fingerprints. Well done, Sebastian. You get a cookie. I bless you on behalf of the goddess of law. What is this kindergarten prosecutorial job going on here? What is this? Please amend your testimony. Are you all right with that, Prosecutor Edgeworth? Yes? Like, how am I supposed to respond to that? <sighs> okay. The victim carried a chessboard. From it, we found Simon Key's fingerprints. He... Yeah, he brought it here. What, what does that prove to anybody at all in any shape, way, or form? What does that have to do with anything? I'm next level confused. Fingerprints found on the chessboard. Is that the ace up your sleeve? Because, wow, I'm unimpressed. Ace in my sleeve? Oh, ace up my sleeve. Yes, all right, sure. Uh, yes, the methods I use are always the best. The ace is my trump card. Well, then, uh, allow me to show you that it is, in fact, not a trump card at all. It, it, it barely constitutes a joker in this deck. What the hell are you on? Simon Keys was the one who s sent this chessboard to the victim in the first place. So it's only natural some of his prints would be left on it. Ah! That took way too long. Are the neurons in your head taking a little while to fire off, my dude? 
These fingerprints are hardly decisive evidence. Perhaps your arrest was a little too rash? Rash? To begin with, this incident occurred in the detention center and the prison. To suspect Simon just because he isn't a prisoner or a guard is a little unreasonable. Ah! What? What's with them all of a sudden? Wahahaha! I finally get what you're trying to say! Rash. You mean we were too quick to arrest the guy, right? Have you never heard the term before? He was stuck on that? Sure, I was the first to lay eyes on him. And I was the first to notice the evidence. That was even faster. But I am not rash. Sure, Simon Keyes isn't a guard or a prisoner, but... Sebastian? Judge Courtney? What are you doing, Justine? Don't butt in like that. Pardon me, Sebastian. Yes, your words on the suspect are very interesting. However, shouldn't you get to the best part first? The best part? Why don't you tell them about your wonderful reasoning regarding the murder weapon? Good one, Justine! Nice suggestion! Mr. Edgeworth, listen to my first-rate reasoning! I don't want to! You're very bad at this, evidently! With this reason- Will this reasoning explain why you arrested Mr. Keys? I don't know, sure, let's say that I did. I'm sure it'll meet your expectations. Just Courtney changed the flow of the conversation. I feel as if uh, she kind of needs to be here or he wouldn't have much real ability to do anything. What, just what is she planning? Oh, all right, here we go again. Here we freaking go. It's obvious the murder weapon was a sharp metal object. However, the prison maintains strict control over potentially lethal items. So, that's why I've reasoned that the murder weapon was brought in from the outside. Yes, it was hidden inside that chessboard. And since only the victim and the suspect's fingerprints were found on the chessboard, isn't it obvious who brought and used the murder weapon? Okay, that is significantly better. At least it's clearer than his last testimony, my god. It's the best reasoning you can get from Prosecutor the Best. How do you like that? Did you just get that backwards? Now he's mixing up the best with his own name. But could someone really hide a weapon inside a gift sent to a prisoner? <laughs> I don't know why, but I, I looked over at Miles while his eyes were closed. And he's just like, oh my god, Kay, you sweet summer child. How are you this ignorant of things? That's like Prison Escape 101. You'll find a good place if you examine the inside of the chessboard. Inside the chessboard? Is there some place to hide a weapon? Uh, well, okay. You mean other than just flat out inside the box? Let's find out. As I thought, there are only chess pieces inside. <laughs> wow, what an annoying laugh. Inside the chessboard, huh? Perhaps I should examine it a bit further. Uh, maybe there's like a, a hidden hatch or something? Oh, so be it. This is... The top panel is removable. It's quite deep. Yes, there's more than enough room to hide a small knife. Understand now? This is how the culprit smuggled in the... Huh. Huh. What's with the... Huh? I wasn't even finished. Mr. DeBest, good lord, are you crying? What the hell? Okay, uh, there is something you have forgotten. There's a gate at the entrance of the detention center. Eh? Well, there, there is, but... He means the security gates with the metal detectors, Sebastian. We had to pass through the same check when we entered the prison, remember? Of course I don't! Ah! Ah! Yeah, that, that, that's it, I remember now, yeah. Looks like it completely forgot. It would be impossible to smuggle a sharp metal object into the detention center. Therefore, your reasoning never held even from the be very beginning. <laughs> now, now what? That gate is only used on people. In other words, packages sent to the detention center undergo a simpler check. Why? Aren't, like, metal detectors in the, like, like, stuff like that is You're more likely to use that stuff on packages and cargo than you are people beforehand. Like, what? So they don't use a metal detector for that? Why wouldn't they? They have the ability. This never should have happened. 
It seems the guards were too careless. They wouldn't have had an opportunity to mess up if you put it through a damn metal detector first. Seriously, if you put a chessboard through a metal detector and it went off, you'd be mildly suspicious. Right, Justine? Uh, thanks for the assist. You're welcome. I know how bad you are at this. Why are you doing this for him? Now then, Prosecutor Edgeworth, your cross-examination, if you please. Cross-examination. This is if we were in the courtroom. Very well. His reasoning. Let's see how long it will hold up under pressure. Do 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 do. All right. Obvious as it may have been, I still felt the need to do that. Okay. It's obvious the murder weapon was a sharp metal object. Okay. Well, what about? I mean, what? Why does it have to be metal? A sharp metal object. Do you have proof of that? Didn't you see the victim's wound? Worthless prosecutor? Um... Yeah, I, I did, but it doesn't need to be a metal object to, 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 to do that. It could have been made out of wood, porcelain, granite. Like, it just needs to be vaguely pointy. The fatal blow was a stab to the throat, and a knife perfectly matches up with that. There could be no other explanation. Huh. Seems they don't know about that piece of information yet. <laughs> Nothing to say. Speechless, aren't you, Mr. Edgeworth? Right, next. There's plenty more to my reasoning. So you say. However, the prison maintains strict control over the potentially lethal items, true. So that's why I've reasoned that the murder weapon was brought in from the outside. That that seems fair. It's inside the chessboard. Okay, but do you know that it was? Like, do you have definitive information on that one? No weapon was found at the crime scene, not even inside the chessboard. So where did the murder weapon disappear to? I'd like to hear your answer to that. Well, after the crime, the culprit must have hidden it somewhere in the prison. Is there a problem with the statement the best just made? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say there probably was a little itty bitty one, yeah. The murder weapon is hidden inside the prison? I don't think so. It's clear from the piece, this piece of evidence. What shows the murder weapon can't be inside the prison? Let's see, which one was it? Prison investigation? Yeah, they looked for the whole damn place, but they couldn't find Jiggity Jiggity Jack. Smug, smug, smug. Have you completely forgotten your own actions? You, along with Warden Roland, conducted a search of the prison. But you didn't find the murder weapon, right? Ha! That's... We must have overlooked something! This guy just completely contradicted himself. You carried out such a sloppy investigation? I'm amazed that you call yourself the best. Are you mocking me?! Stop making fun of this incredibly inept loser! Sebastian! <laughs> Please calm yourself. Don't get caught up in the opponent's pace. I'm fine, Justine. Did you really think the best prosecutor would be shaken by someone miles behind him? Okay, well, I'll give you kudos for the wordplay there. That was pretty solid. I wish he'd stop messing around with other people's names. Okay, but when you live in a world of puns, you might as well roll with it. Oh, in that case, Kay Faraday is far, far ahead. Keep working on that one, Kay. Kay, don't you get caught up in this too? Yes, if my best investigation didn't find anything then there must not have been a single weapon in the prison. In that case, there's only one possibility. The criminal must have taken the murder weapon with him when he left the prison. But we literally just established that there's metal detectors through the security gate. So it's only natural we didn't find it there. Yeah. Objection. Oh my god. There was no way the culprit could have brought the weapon out of the prison, you dingbat. And this piece of evidence shows why. Oh my Guy! Alright. It's not like this is hard. Have you completely forgotten your own testimony? Y y that's twice you've insulted me! Yeah, well, maybe stop being so bad at your job. Oh, seems like you remember what I said earlier. But you do well to remember further than that. Th what is that? Th this guy, he really doesn't remember anything. Do you have short term memory loss? Do you require medical attention, good sir? Seems that way. The detention center and the prisoner equipped with security gates. Anyone leaving must pass through these gates. 
gates equipped with metal detectors. Ah! That's what you... Looks like he remembers now. Yes, there's no way someone could have brought the murder weapon through those gates. And so the criminal could not have taken it out of the prison either. <laughs> so then, Prosecutor Edgeworth, do you know where this murder weapon went to? Not even remotely. Perhaps the weapon is still inside the prison. But we couldn't find it anywhere in the prison. The reason you didn't find it is because you believed it to be a sharp metal object, which, as we established earlier, was kind of just a random literal stab at the air and hoping for the best. We saw the very moment when Mr. Knightley was attacked, after all. If you can say that much, then perhaps you can enlighten us. What would you say is the murder weapon in this case? If I had to go off of everything that I know so far, it's probably that duck. That seems like a safe bet. Even again, though, I still think it's a little weird that they couldn't tell the difference between a stab wound and a chomp wound. But all right, that's what I'm going with. Here is footage from a security camera. It shows one of the cells in the detention center. Which is, by the way, very weird that you didn't think to look this up. See it with your own eyes! Attacked by a dog! Ah! My everything! Blah, blah, blah! Being murdered! Oh no! Blah! <laughs> what? Th 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 this is- it can't be! Yes, and it really didn't take a lot of effort to get this information, so what's your excuse? This tape clearly shows the moment the victim- I mean, I guess he is a rookie, but still, was attacked by a black dog. I believe this is sufficient proof, wouldn't you say? Indeed, this is vital evidence. Horse Knightley was killed in the detention center by that dog. After that, the body was moved to the prison workroom. Our witness claims to have seen a dog in the workroom when the body was found, which, by the way, I guess you never bothered to ask any questions to the dude. I mean, it said that he did, but what did you ask him? Apparently nothing much. Of course, a dog couldn't have planned this crime on its own. However, there is someone who could have. That's enough, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Judge Courtney? It's true that this camera footage is vital evidence, but you must realize that I also don't care. However, there is something else you must prove. Actually, you've already noticed it, haven't you? It's just as she says. There is still a huge flaw in my reasoning. If that black dog is a prisoner's pet, how was it able to move between the detention center and prison? Yeah, we don't have anything resembling an answer to that. Ah! Well, we do, Mr. Edgeworth. I still don't know how the dog managed to move from one place to the other. Did Ray leave? I knew it. What? You're one to talk? You don't know either! He may not, but I am giving him preferential treatment for some reason. If you do not solve this mystery, I'm afraid I cannot accept your logic. If this was a real courtroom, I would call for a recess now. But it's not, so I don't know. What are you hitting with that thing? Ah, wait, I'm not finished yet. Too bad, don't care. Didn't ask. Court has been adjourned. Leave at once. This isn't a courtroom. It's, it's merely quasically adjacent. Well then, as I said, court is adjourned, and I am no longer listening to anything you have to say. Bye! I can't prove my argument, but isn't it the same case with Mr. Keys? Whatever do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? At least my theory holds some amount of water. His is basically a friggin' colander! Just as I don't know how the dog entered the detention center, you also don't know how Simon Keys entered the detention center in prison. Although he came to visit the victim, he was an outsider to the prison. Don't you think it would be difficult for him to commit a crime inside the prison? Oh snap, I didn't think about that. Judge Courtney, now the burden of proof lies with you and your silly haircut. Show us evidence that Simon Keys into the prison. Overruled. I'm a judge, I don't have to. <laughs> you want me to present evidence? I'm happy to oblige. Whoa! Does she really have evidence? It's about time I told you. Now that I know the basis of your reasoning, Prosecutor Edgeworth. What is she thinking? It seems you don't even know Simon Key's real occupation. He's a circus performer. Oh. Then I guess he worked with the animal show. 
Sure would have been nice if he was willing to tell us that when we talked to him. A circus performer! Yes? Have you ever heard of the Berry Pigs? I have! I do! That was the place about that case that everyone hated except for me and I thought was actually really nice. Circus. Ah! I wonder if we get to see any of them. That'd be so cool. But of course, yesterday was the day that I wouldn't have missed for the world. Why wouldn't you have missed it, you crazy lady in a big coat? Did something important happen? Oh, heavens no, I despise meetings. It was the animal show. It seems you've realized. On the day of the incident, an animal show is being performed at the prison. And the show was put on by the Barry Big Circus. So then, do you mean Simon is... Simon keys into the prison as a staff member of the animal show. Why didn't he tell us this? That we know for a fact. Daggerbron! Th this woman! She's been concealing this fact the whole time! Underneath her hair, Flippy! She only planned to reveal it after hearing my reasoning! What a jerk! Come to think of it. But what are you doing, Justine? Don't butt in like that! Pardon me, Sebastian. Yes, your words on the suspect are very interesting. However, shouldn't you get to the best part first? Mr. The Best was going to say it then, but she stopped him! <laughs> How do you like that, worthless prosecutor? You didn't do anything! Shut up, child! Well then, now it really is time for a recess. I'll end with some advice. I had already doubted your abilities as a prosecutor, even though you actually have a phenomenal track record and, you know, not even... Three weeks ago, solved an international crime smuggling ring that had been going on for decades that nobody else could even get close to, but, you know. Which is why I relieved you of your authority. You'd best not forget that. What are you trying to say? The PIC can still take away your badge. Yeah, well, you know what? Maybe I question the validity of your judging ability. How about that? Who do I gotta consult for that? If you value your badge, I'd advise you not to show your face before me again. You showed up here, not me! Is that a threat? Yeah, sure. The gods of law is merciful, but that doesn't mean you can get away with everything. And one more thing. I must digress. I suggest you stop with the Defense Attorney Act. That's none of your concern. I don't intend to abandon a case I'm involved in so easily. For defense attorneys, a relationship of mutual trust with their client is vital. It's very different from the way of the prosecutor. In any case, you didn't even know about your client's occupation. Yeah, because he was too pants-winningly terrified of me to bother actually explaining it. Which, I guess, in of itself still kind of proves your point. But shut up! Gah! Well then, I must be going. May the blessings of the Goddess of Law be upon you. You want to actually give a name to that Goddess of Law, or are you just going to keep saying that constantly? Also, Ray really has just been here the entire time and said nothing. Okay. Did Simon lie to us? Well, it's more of an omission of the truth. Seems he lied to Uncle Ray, too. This complicates matters. Why'd he do that? <sighs> hey, hey, Miles, don't tell me you've got cold feet already. Courtney Pie is quite a handful, but giving up is still at cool. A defense attorney's creed is to never give up, remember? You're my assistant. Of course, I don't plan on giving up either. It's just... God, those two are just so much to deal with. My theory that he couldn't enter the prison no longer holds. <sighs> Looks like we'll have to investigate once more. Oh boy! Investigate, we most certainly shall. Oh, this has been... a day.